Now that we've gone over all the equipment that we need to get sharpening, let's start talking about the actual process. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is mount your skates into your jig. This is a really quite an easy process, but it's important that you do it the same way every single time. With the bottom mount jig, we're simply gonna slide the blade in, let it drop down to the bottom, pull it to the backstop, and while holding it in place gently, we're gonna tighten up the knobs. Now a top mount jig is gonna be a little bit different. Same thing, we'll hold the jig, hold the blade, slide it into place, and then we're gonna lift the blade up till we hit the top stops, and then tighten the clamps. Now that we have our blades mounted in our jig, it's time to move on to the stones that we're gonna be using. When you're using stones, stones come in all different grits. It's important to start with a rougher stone and work your way to the finer stones. If you're not quite sure of what grits you have, talk to the dealer that you bought it from or take a quick look online. With diamond stones, you'll generally see black will be an extremely coarse, and then you can move to a blue, which is finer, a red, which is even finer, and then a green, which is the finest. Those are the colors for DMT. With other stones like Frank Signature, they move from black to blue to red to gold being the finest step. For sharpening today, we're gonna to start off with the diamond stone. With this stone, we're using a blue, which is a coarse grit, which is a great place to start for sharpening. We'll then move on to finer stones as we progress through. With a diamond stone, we have to remember that we use soapy water or just water during the sharpening process. So we'll spray the stone, and get it nice and wet. And then what we'll do is place the stone down on the blades and simply push the stone forward and back over and over again. We wanna make sure when we're sharpening that we're doing straight strokes up and back. We wanna avoid doing a cross stroke where we'll start at the back on one side of the stone and bring it across to the other. The reason why we don't want to use a cross stroke while we're sharpening is because the stone wears down over time and becomes a little less coarse as you're sharpening. When we do a cross pattern, we're starting and finishing our stroke at the edge of that wear pattern. So generally the stone is a little more coarse in those spots. So if we're using a coarser stone in the front and back, and not as coarse in the middle, we're gonna wear the blade down unevenly. If we just do straight strokes up and down, we're gonna be able to control that wear and remove material from the blade at a more even pace. What we're looking to do when we're sharpening is create a burr. So a burr is the metal that's gonna get folded over and roll off the blade as we're grinding it down. The burr is really the most important thing that we wanna monitor while we're sharpening. The goal of sharpening is to create a consistent burr on all four edges from the very back to the very front. That's how we know we've removed material at an even pace. And that's what you should be looking for. Everyone has a slightly different process for sharpening and I encourage you to create your own process over time too. These are the things that we need to pay attention to when we're sharpening is that consistent burr from the front to the back on all four edges. Another thing to think about while you're sharpening is that your blades are actually round and the stone is flat. So while you're sharpening, you wanna almost seem like you're sharpening a ball. So you wanna have a pattern where you're almost moving the stone in a round pattern because the round blade and the flat stone only interact at one point. So it's important to follow a round pattern while you're sharpening. This is a bit exaggerated when we do it like this, but you wanna have that in your mind because what we can do while we're sharpening is when we go to the end, while the stone is over the end of the blade, if we have pressure back towards myself, we aren't actually sharpening the last two inches, three inches of this blade. So we're removing material from 
further up the blade and not the end. And that can make our radius wear inconsistently. So we wanna make sure while we're sharpening that we have that feeling of sharpening a round object because our blades are a round object. A lot of people ask questions about how many strokes should I do when I'm sharpening? And that's really kind of hard to tell. This is something that you have to figure out on your own. Initially, counting strokes can be really helpful to keep you on track. I suggest going for 10 to 15 strokes, then stopping to check to see how your burr is developing. Eventually, over time, you'll develop a process for yourself that may include counting strokes, or how I like to sharpen is listening. If you listen to the stone and you listen to the grinding that's going on, you'll know after a period of time that that stone has done its job. Stopping periodically still to check for burr is very important to do. Again, it's important that you develop your own sharpening method over time. There's no one size fits all for sharpening. It's what works best for you, your stones, and your blades. As you're sharpening, you'll wanna make sure you rotate your jig. So if the toes are facing away from you, spinning your jig around and continuing to sharpening this way will help ensure that you're still wearing your blades down evenly. We will all inevitably put a little too much pressure when the stone is closest to us while we're sharpening. That's inevitable, it happens with all of us. But if we're able to rotate the jig, we're gonna even that out as much as we possibly can. Ultimately, we never wanna put pressure down on the stones, but we will need to hold the stone and guide it. So rotating the jig will be really important to make sure that we're wearing our blades and removing material evenly throughout the length of them. After sharpening a little bit and checking your burr, the other thing you wanna make sure that you're doing consistently is wiping the blades down. Take a clean paper towel and just give them a swipe. By doing this, we're removing the shavings and metal that we've created and allowing the stone to cut cleaner as we progress through finer and finer grits. Now that we have good burr on all four edges from the back to the front, what we'll do now is switch to a finer stone. The process is the same when we do that. So we'll find our finer stone. This one is a red grit. We'll spray it down and we'll continue sharpening. What we wanna do now that we've moved to a finer grit is make sure that the coarser grinding marks that we've put in through the coarser stones are starting to work out. We wanna start polishing that surface to become a lot smoother. So with this, again, we can count strokes, which is a really great way to, for you to keep track of your sharpening, or take a moment and listen to the work the stone is doing. At first, the stone will sound loud. Over time, it will get quieter and it will feel smoother as you're sharpening. These are both keys that you're getting to a point where you can move on. Once you've completed sharpening and made your way through your coarser stones into your finer stones, and you've got a good burr on all four edges, it's time to remove that burr. Deburring is typically one of the most frustrating parts of sharpening, but it doesn't have to be, as long as we know the tools that we're using and the appropriate way to use them. Much like a sharpening stone, deburring stones come in many different varieties, in natural, diamond stones, and even a carbide deburring stone, which will actually cut the burr off of your blade. It's important when you're using a deburring stone to understand how they work best. A lot of times we can find natural stones in these smaller shapes, these smaller squares, and these are great for deburring. Diamond stones come typically in a longer square or rectangular pattern. And it's important to understand the limitations of a stone like this. While these are wildly effective, they must be used properly. Um. When deburring your blade, what we'll do is you'll place the stone on the edge that you'll be deburring. I like to take a rag, place it on the opposite edge, and then pinch the stone between my thumb and my forefinger for the deburring process. When we deburr, we're simply going to slide the stone, pushing even pressure along the length of the blade and back. Much like in the sharpening process, you'll initially feel the stone and hear it making more noise. As you continue on, it will make less and less noise.
After doing a few strokes, stop to check for burr. To do that, you'll place your nail against the blade and run it up towards the edge. If you feel it catch, you've still gotten burr and you still have a little bit more work to do. When deburring your blades, it's really important to never angle the burr stone. This is the number one reason why most people have a hard time removing burr from their blades. Because over time, if you angle, your st if you angle the stone, you're gonna bevel the edge. So when you place a burr stone flat on it, you're not actually contacting that edge with a burr anymore. It's simply going right over it and you'll never be able to remove that burr unless you angle it. The only way to fix this is to have your blades re-rocked. When removing burr with a rectangular stone, like a diamond stone, it's important to realize that our blades are bent. So when we use a long stone like this and place it on, we're not making very good contact over the surface because it's really only making contact in one place. If we flip the blade over and are on that bent edge or a running edge, we're actually making contact in two places and the majority of the stone is not doing its job. A great way that we can overcome this is by turning the stone so that we use it on the edge. This will allow a much smaller contact surface and much more efficient deburring. When deburring with diamond stones, remember that these come in different grits too. Conveniently, blue, red, and green are really evenly marked on them and easy to identify. If you were to choose one diamond stone for sharpening, the red is the most common one to go with. This is a fine grit that will do a great job of removing your burr. If you have a tough, tough burr, or you get kicked or have a stripped edge that you need to remove quick, Using a coarser grit like a blue stone is gonna help you out a lot, but this isn't really necessary to have with you all the time.